What's going on guys and welcome back to the Hungry Road. The rental of the week is the 2023 Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now when I saw the Santa Cruz at the Montreal International Airport, I got very excited because when I see these on the road, I'm like, that thing looks so cool. It kind of reminds me of like an El Camino sort of thing, but with four doors and a little more bulky. It's like the car nobody asks for because everyone is looking for like, you know, crossovers and SUVs and stuff like that these days. And Hyundai was like, man, let me go ahead and make a little four door half pickup type deal right here with front wheel drive. Like no one asks for this, but we're going to do a little walk around here because we're a little short on time. Let's start with the front over here. So the front of the car is pretty consistent with Hyundai's styling. We do have these really cool, unique running lights. So as you can see, the grill right here, a lot of little chrome pieces. There's also five trims. I'll be bouncing all over the place here. So there's the uh, is it SE, SEL, uh, night edition then there's like a limited and an XRT you get a black grill forgive me guys I know in the video I say this is an SEL trim because I'm in Canada this is a Canadian spec there's only two specs in Canada preferred and ultimate the ultimate has the black grill and the preferred has the chrome grill but in the United States there's the SE SEL night uh, X XTR, whatever, XRT, and then the Limited. So this is a Canadian spec vehicle, because it's Ontario, but I'm in Montreal, and I go over some of the US trims. Okay, I hope that cleans up any confusion. If you get the, uh, the seagulls up there yelling at me, <laughs> you get a black grill if you get the Night Edition, or I believe the XRT, but this looks nice and clean. And the cool thing, the running lights, beautiful so they kind of like hide in the grill so when these are off it looks just like more parts of the grill very very well done right there headlights are down there at the bottom they're like yellow lights i don't like that at all but a pretty cool little complicated front end not bad at all but as indicated on the back of the truck this is powered by a 2.5 liter single turbo four cylinder engine makes 281 horsepower about 198 foot pounds of torque i could be wrong but i don't, I don't think i'm wrong but yes it's decent it just doesn't feel like anything or sound like anything if you go to the back of the car here h track as we can see at the little logo right here that indicates all-wheel drive and here is your engine size and of course the turbo right there and we're back here look at that santa cruz just like stamped into the actual bed. That's really, really cool. I like that a lot. But like I was mentioning, the styling is my favorite part of the car. Kind of looks like a shark fin almost. And it's not like a super sharp or like, you know, one of those guys over there where it's just like a, a freaking truck. This has more style, more elegance, more fashion sense if you say. It's curvy, feminine, but yet still bulky, muscular. I really like that, but I don't like these things. Like, what is this notch for? It's got a picture of the car on it. I don't quite understand, uh, but you know, I guess it gives a little ruggedness. These little triangles that kind of go up and they build up and then they build back down. <laughs> I don't quite get it, but you can get side steps on yours if you optioned yours up. The roof rails are also optional. We got those there. Oh yes, of course, winter tires are mandatory here in Canada. I'm Montreal, by the way. But look at the back here. Check out these running lights. So these guys back here, these are actually the running lights. Let me turn those on for you. Now we have the lights on back here. Very, very cool, beautiful looking LEDs back here. But this is an incandescent bulb. I don't know why they did all LEDs here, but then like made this a regular old turn signal bulb. Reverse lights up, or reverse lights actually down there. I'm not sure what that is. Let's turn it on. Okay, the whole thing is a turn signal which is fine but as you can see that at speed they're blinking incandescent bulbs just doesn't look as clean as if it was just a solid led but we do have a little step right here on either side again the triangle theme nice and rugged and again i like the license plate being a lot lower on the car but let's open the bed up real quick or the tonneau cover so you have like a slide and a latch so let's push it up as easily as push it up 
can be all, there we go and snaps out of place and you can kind of push the tunnel cover back oh i have it lapsed right now for whatever reason but yeah decent amount of space in the bed nothing crazy looks like this part lifts up where your spare tire might be but little lights in the bed nothing too crazy and again you can click this button here and the tailgate falls down but you do need to lift it up yourself if you want to put it back together but these here are the keys to the hyundai santa cruz not a bad looking set of keys at all a little more on the bulky side that's cool we have a lock button unlock uh i hold the button down for the uh was it was that part of, i don't know the bed <laughs> we have the horn and the um remote start down here but like most cars keep the keys in your pocket walk up to the door but you can't just grab the door handle nothing happens you have to press this little button right here then the door opens up and it's saying it goes for locking it but the interior is pretty standard nothing crazy there's a lot of plastic in here and again this car starts at like thirty thousand dollars which is actually excellent in today's market you get kind of a lot of car for the money and you kind of can notice looks like almost stadium seating so like the front seat looks a little lower than the rear seat does which is kind of cool but yeah nothing crazy here let's go ahead and get inside check out the interior let's go ahead and put our foot on a brake and press the star button all right decent little an animation there beautiful looking integrated 10.3 inch touchscreen i love how it's like integrated into the dash and it's not just like a screen plopped up here like we see in so many car models these days but a very simple uh steering wheel here all your like media stuff is over here to the left volume it's like your uh, track skipping your favorite button calls whatever you can talk to the car change the radio of uh, the uh, source and over here sorry over here we have the this is how you change the whatever you're looking at in the main screen over here nothing crazy we have your of course auto steer like most of these hyundai vehicles has now we have uh going through your menus and stuff hold on so, like this you get it you get you see the background over there cruise control paddle shifters in case you want to get sporty but yes we have we are in montreal canada so we are in kilometers over there but on the inside you see miles per hour no big deal fuel gauge nothing crazy going on in here you know like i said it's a pretty standard vehicle i don't think hyundai put a lot of uh extra stuff in here but that's okay we have our climate control down here again it's all like touch it's not like a screen it's like a sort of panel you kind of touch so you up here there you go it's that simple change your uh your air direction right here very simple fan speeds right there and the let's go through the screen look how intuitive not intuitive <laughs> responsive this is apple carplay is standard android auto is all standard there's nothing really crazy in here i kind of went through a bunch of things it's just like a standard pickup sort of thing again like i said it's a pretty inexpensive video or vehicle for what hyundai is making nowadays down here we do have the uh this is how you get your you so over here on the left this is how you're going to use apple carplay android auto and on the right you have charging in the middle you have a good little 12 volt outlet I lift up from the middle there you go cigarette lighter type stuff in there traditional gear shifter is put your hand here pull back Close on the drive when you go into manual mode, slide over to the left. Well, yeah, I'm just in neutral already. Hop, slide back. Now you go into manual mode as denoted by the gear at the top of the uh, oh, go ahead, there you go at the top of the thing there. Put it back in drive, and you'll see uh, or automatic. You'll see the drive symbol show back up right there. And back here, we have our drive modes. So, this is going to be drive. So, there's two things you can do here. So, you have this little lever, you can press it, and you, if you move this up and down we go here move it up and down sport mode smart mode i guess i'm not sure what that does it determines how you want if you want it whatever sport normal whatever but if you press that button it turns into terrain so now you can put it in snow mode or mud mode or sand mode you know i'd love to try to take this thing out and see what these modes do how it handles the different environments downhill brake control on like yeah so if you're going down a dune or something Continuing on, we do have two cup holders here, no big deal. We do have your downhill control, that the thing is just turned on by itself. 
This is your cameras, you got your parking brake, auto hold right there. And back here, we have more climate stuff. So this is kind of how you control your heated seats. Interesting place to put these, because often I've hit these. This would be your cooled seats, but this is your driver side heated seat, passenger side heated seat, and your heated wheel. Like I said, very interesting place to put these. Um, I don't know, I would have put them like maybe in the corners down here or even in the screen, but no matter. And inside here, open this up, more storage on the inside. But yes, it's a very simple interior. There's not much to it. Again, I love this section here. I think that's done beautifully. And this is okay too, but it does feel kind of cheap in here. And I can expect that for it being a $30,000 vehicle. The back seat is super uneventful. There's nothing happening back here. No USB ports, no nothing, and that's fine. You can't fold the back seats down because obviously the bed of the truck is back there, but there's, there's really not much going on. Let's see what happens when we pull this lever. Okay. Oh, we have storage underneath. Hmm. There's some salt. Something in here. Looks pretty bad. Got some stuff going on in here. No big deal. Let's pull the other side up and see what's over there. So we've lifted the other side up and it looks like your tire repair um, kit is underneath the back seat here. So you're like, you know, your, your jack or whatever. But yeah, let's put these back down. Let's pull the lever. No big deal at all. I didn't mention it because it's probably common sense, but there is a little window right here. You can kind of just slide open if you want to get some extra airflow, but it's a little cold, probably 40 degrees outside. But yes. We are inside the 2023 Hyundai Santa Cruz. I keep wanting to call it something else, but that's what it is. It's okay. The driving experience is a little more lackluster than I was expecting. I just didn't know what I was expecting. It's kind of like a pickup truck, crossover, car, mashup, really. And we're on winter tires because in Canada, it is absolutely the law to have winter tires on your car from a certain time of the year to another certain time of the year fine and smart but it's okay decently comfortable cloth seats i don't even know if these can be an option with leather or anything like that but it's fine it drives more like a car than like a truck and i don't know how it's really supposed to feel there are you know, the drive modes we went over earlier i kind of keep it in sport just because i like sporty stuff we can put it in normal for a second the ride is fine you know i can feel bumps i can but I'm not, I don't feel like I'm in a bouncy Camaro or anything like that. I don't know why the Camaro sticks in my head. That was one of the bounciest cars I've ever driven. But it's a good time. Uh, the Apple CarPlay is works very well. The, the screen is nice and bright. I get a lot of information up front. The cars tell me I'm doing my I'm front wheel drive right now. All wheel drive kicks in whenever it's, it's needed to, to help with propulsion or whatever. But yeah, I don't have much to say. I mean, Visibility is good. Blind spot detection is good. I can drive, it can drive itself, so let's go ahead and set that up. We have the uh, cruise control on, set it to 73 miles an hour. Hold on, I'll raise it up, 75 miles an hour. I don't the speed limit is here. It won't go above 74. Oh, do I gotta add the gas? Interesting, I'm adding the gas, okay. Let's go ahead and set it. Cruise set 75, press steel wheel button, hands off. Again, I have to, Give Hyundai and Kia their flowers. We got a little turn coming up here. Let's see how it handles it. Hands off. Just fine. I got to give Kia and Hyundai their flowers. Their self-driving systems are pretty good. Not even going to hold you up. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's a big plus of the car. Like I said, this thing start at like $26,000. That is like extremely... It, it, extremely inexpensive and affordable for the car market these days because it's, everything is just through the roof you have all these different bells and whistles but Hyundai dialed it back with this car We're like you know what let's give people the basics the bear for the wheels the basics the bear you get four wheels you get four doors you get four seats maybe five depends on who's back there and that, that's it. You got, you got a chunk space, you got open chunk space back there. You have all wheel drive. You have, you know, a comfortable ride. You're good. I don't know what else there is to say about it. 
Would I buy one? Probably not. But I love the way it looks. It's just different. You know? I like the styling of this thing. It's nice and round and smooth and like muscular. Like a better Honda, a better Honda Ridgeline. You know? That's a little more boxy. This is more like smooth. Like, you know? I don't know, man. But anyway, guys. Thank you for watching this episode of The Hungry Road. This one was a little bit of a quicker one. A little more thrown together one. I was short on time today, so I didn't have a chance to film everything like I wanted to, like I usually do. But hopefully, you still enjoyed it. And if you get one of these, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know why you like it. All right, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you.